and then we're gonna go down here. And go win G. Welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie. This is a scouting related video for my scouting 2020 vlogs, the vlogs that I've been doing for that. If you guys have been following that, you'll get a kick out of this, I think. It's relevant to that. And if you haven't followed it, go back and check those out. They've been a lot of fun. They've been a chance for me and my daughter Genevieve to get out of the house during the pandemic, to get out there and go out and stretch our legs a little bit, get some fresh air, get some exercise, but also move the scouting efforts forward. Very important. Very important to me because that way I can fulfill my promise to you, friends of Bungie, all the folks who are following Death by Bungie. I have promised, or at least promised that I would try, to kill a deer on public ground this year. That's something that has been requested several times. A lot of people have asked about that. A lot of people want to know more about scouting on public ground. I wanted to know more about scouting on public ground, so I made that commitment. I've committed myself to trying to kill a deer on public ground this year, and so we're doing a lot of scouting to make that happen. Important to me, the use of the Onyx app. Now, here on my screen, you will see the Onyx app, but this is the desktop version. I am logged right in on the desktop version of that app. And I'm going to use that for the purposes of this video. Now I've been using the app when I am out there scouting, I've been doing it on my phone. I have the app installed and I paid for a subscription to Onyx this year. I'm paying for this just like everybody else who's using Onyx, unless they're sponsored by Onyx, which I am not. I like it so far, it's been a little bit buggy, but I will tell you, now, when I've had problems with the app, the company has been very responsive. If I send them an email, a tech support request, whatever, I get a response relatively quickly, like the same day, and they fixed the problems that I had, or at least led me in the right direction to where I understood its limitations by the time that I was done. So I do appreciate the company. I'm happy with the product overall. It's I don't remember how much it costs. If you have questions about how much it costs, you should refer to the Onyx website. I'm logged into my account right here, and you can see that I have selected a section of state game lands right here in my home county in northeastern Pennsylvania. This is not a section. As you can tell by looking at this, there's no waypoints on here. I'll go over here real quick. If I go over to my content, you can see all the waypoints that I've assessed, that I've set in place on my phone. And if I go to those locations, I can look at what I've got for locations, for waypoints, for notes and whatnot. I can find that stuff very easily by going to those waypoints on my phone. I can also do it here on the desktop because the two sync back and forth. If I change something on my phone, come back and log in here, hit refresh, it will load whatever was placed on my phone. It should upload all of that to the website to the web-based version of it. So all my waypoints are in both places. It's handy going both ways because now when I go into this software right now here on this screen, if I was to place a waypoint there and then refresh it on my phone, that waypoint will now be on my phone. You can see why that's valuable because I can do some scouting, virtual scouting. Ooh, that's, it's not the Onyx app, but I can do some virtual scouting right here on the computer, make some changes, make some suggestions mark some points that I want to check out, and then refresh that on my phone. And when I get out in the field, I will have that right here on my phone. Very important, very, very handy. It's using technology to its fullest. I really like that. Now, this section of state game lands that you are looking at right here on this screen, I can tell you I have never been to this physical location, never been to any of these places, but I can tell you by looking at it, I can tell you by looking at it that it's a really good place to hunt deer. You know how I know? You know how I know? If you look at it real close, there's a picture of a deer on it. <laughs> so it must be a good spot to hunt deer, right? Uh, that brings up an interesting point though. I don't know a lot about this app and a lot about the various uh, symbols that they use. I hope that there is a legend somewhere, but I have not been able to locate it. So if you come across that, please let me know. What does that deer symbol reference? I think it references hunting grounds. The blue area here is a state game land, okay? And if you zoom right in on that, one thing you can see is that if I go to my map layers, I can actually turn that off 
pretty handy because it gives you a clearer image. Those blue layers that outline those public grounds, I'm clicking them on and off right now, those blue layers are made up on your phone of a series of small blue dots. It's nice to be able to remove that layer to get a clearer image. Recently, Onyx adjusted their settings a little bit to make that a little bit clearer on the phone. They moved the dots further apart. It works out pretty well. It actually is pretty handy on the phone. But if you want to get really up close and personal with your maps here, then think about turning those layers on and off. I'll show you right here also if we zoom out. You can turn off the, the private lands as well so you don't get all that. And you might want to do that in a case where either you want your map to be a little cleaner or you want to turn it off so that you aren't loading as much data, something like that. But if you're interested in, I always like to have the lines on, typically, so that I know where my boundaries are. That's kind of the value of the app is knowing where you're at. Now, I should know that not only do you have to hunt here where the deer is on the screen, but we could also zoom in here. And if you want to hunt with the lucky... 14 Sportsman's Club. I don't know anything about these people, anything like that. I can click on that and it will give me over on the left hand side mailing address information, property size, information like that about that property. It's taken from public records. It's all public information, but this saves you a trip to the courthouse if you're looking to get permission off one of these folks in order to, to set up a hunt in the fall or spring gobbler or what have you. If I want to hunt here with William Pelt, he's got some real nice open areas far back from the road. That might be a real nice spot to go out and try some call some gobblers, work your way down this little hedgerow right here above his name and see if you can draw a gobbler or two out of the hardwood section right there on the western end of that property. For example, if you want to do that, you click on his name. It gives you everything but the phone number. They don't put the phone numbers in here. I listened to a podcast once and they indicated they don't put the phone numbers in here because they just didn't want to deal with all the hassle of people complaining about their phone numbers being given out and all that stuff. Even though that's usually, sometimes it's part of the public record, it may not be accurate, however. In this day and age, people change their phone numbers, it seems like, quite a bit. Going back to the symbols, we got the deer symbol, and in all seriousness, I think that just denotes it's a good place to hunt deer, but our virtual scouting and then our boots on the ground scouting will determine that now, won't they? But I'm looking at this section of property. I have never been here. I haven't looked at it online here. I'm doing this green, completely fresh, so that we'll just, I'm just going through and showing you what I look for when I'm setting up one of my scouting efforts. Okay, I have done this exact same process that we're going through now. I have done this process on four or five other properties, state game land properties in my county, so that I have them within driving distance. And I that way I can go and I, I'm saving, the point of this is to save yourself some time when you do go out there. You could just go here and start walking around and covering every square inch of this property. But man, it would take you a whole lifetime to cover this property. It's huge. And some of the properties, state game lands are like 30,000, 35,000 acres. That's way more than I want to walk, okay? It's going to take a lifetime to do that. I want to get in and out and learn as much as I can about the property and be as efficient and effective as possible. So that's what this app is helping me do. To do that, when we zoom in here, I'm just looking at this first, and one thing that caught my eye about this right off the bat is all the P's. Now, I don't know what the deer logo or icon stands for, that little picture that as far as the legend is concerned, but I do know what the P's are and they stand for parking. And I can tell you right now by looking at this map, this is phenomenal. Compared to the properties that I've been looking at, there is a lot more P's on here, a lot more parking areas than there are on most of the ones that I'm looking at. Now that's important because you need to be able to park the farther away from your hunting area that you have to park, the farther you have to walk to get there. And now we're expending all kinds of energy, getting very sweaty. If I have to walk half a mile, I have found some in the other game lands that I'm uh, scouting, where I have scouted, I found some where the parking areas are half a mile from the entrance to the woods that I would be using. And that's problematic. That's gonna limit the energy that I have left over to go out on my actual hunt in the end. And I'm gonna get all sweaty just walking down the road. I don't need to be doing all that. You know, I need to be parking pretty close and conveniently to where I plan on hunting. Now here you got tons of options. Let's just pick some out here on the Northern boundary, but I'll show you another little feature here. Oh, there's something I, I see right off the bat, some stuff that's interesting right about this. And this is where I would be going to scout. Okay, if I were gonna start right off here, probably a couple of things. Now we can see another tool I wanna show you here. I'll put the eye on there. There's one parking area. Here is another parking area. But the question is, just to give you some perspective, 
if I use that little line distance, you see where I use that, that little line distance icon, hit that. It's telling me it's 763 yards between those two parking areas. I'm going to escape out of that discard. I don't need that line drawn on the screen. But 763 yards, that's a third of a mile maybe. I think there's 1,700 yards in a mile, something like that. So, you know, you got more than a third of a mile that you'll be walking between those two parking areas. So just keep that in mind. You can use this line distance. Now, here's a real nice clearing. We're going to look at that. But if I were to park here and walk to that clearing, we're talking about 335.7 yards, okay, approximately approximately 335.7. How awesome is this? It really is cool because it gives you a good idea. Now, again, you're walking uphill a little bit there, it looks like, um, because if we look at this, our parking area is next to this lighter yellow, faded, faint yellow line. And then right here, I'm going to go back to go to topo view. Topo view is really neat. This shows us a couple of things. We are 20 feet change in elevation between this flat area here where that clearing is. If we go back, here's our clearing. I'm going to put a little eye there so we can see where the clearing is, okay? And I'm just clicking there. But you can see that we're in a 20 foot change in elevation, only 20 feet. That's not so bad. And the reason I say that is if you got to walk up and down hills, that's worse than walking a straight line, nice flat line. So you're going to be expending a lot more energy that way as well. So you can keep that in mind. That makes that a good place to park, okay? Because you know I'm, I, I can get to this property. Now, if you're too close to the parking area, everybody else is gonna hunt there too, right? We gotta think that, keep that in mind as well. And that's something we'll talk about. Another thing that I noticed here, if we go back to our hybrid view, see this little denotation here, PGC Road, that is Pennsylvania Game Commission Road. And if that means that they have a road going out, it's not necessary, you can't drive on that. The Game Commission can drive on it, but you gotta park and walk. But nonetheless, it makes it a lot easier to walk on a logging style road, okay? A road where they get equipment back and forth. And it looks like they're getting it back to this clearing right here. And look how awesome this is. Another neat little tidbit I am learning about this property. They mow this. I can tell you by looking at this from space that they mow this. This technology is so awesome and I hope this shows up on YouTube. But you can actually see tire tracks in here where they've gone through with a brush hog to knock that down. That tells me a few things about that little clearing. All right, we've learned a lot already. Deer are going to feed in this clearing in the evenings. That's, I, I bet that's true. Because they're mowing that down, the longer grasses are getting knocked down. You're getting more sunlight to the bottom of that field. And if there's clover there, it's going to grow up and deer are going to come in and eat it. Other natural forbs that exist here, deer are going to come in and eat. They're going to love that. The problem with it is this nice handy road, along with the convenient parking area not too far away, makes it so that a lot of people are going to hunt that property. So I suspect, just thinking off the top of my head, boots on the ground here, a little bit of scouting is going to verify this or tell me otherwise. But... I suspect what you would see if you hunt that property, if you hunt in that location, is that at the beginning of the season, deer are hitting that an hour before sundown, an hour before the end of shoot, shooting light. And by the third week of the season, because of the number of people that have been in there hunting, you probably are going to see deer coming into that plot only at 11 o'clock at night through 3 o'clock in the morning. And then they'll leave there by morning as they keep an ear out for hunters coming in for the morning hunts. It's going to wear out quick just by its location. If that were a mile from the road, that'd be a different story probably. Now, when we go back to this clearing right here, another thing I really like about this, I'm going to show you another feature on here that I like. Area shape is awesome. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of trace that darker line. When we talk about those topographical lines, I'm this tells me, that we have right here kind of a flat area. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm tracing that all in here and 36.48 acres of flat ground. That's pretty cool. 36.48 acres. And that's a big flat area. I like flat areas. It just seems to me that deer tend to like the flat areas as well. When we're looking at these maps, one of the things we're looking for is terrain changes, ups and downs and everything else. Flat areas, deer, deer look for those same things, okay? And they like a flat area like this, I think. I believe that that is the case. If you got to walk around all day, do you want to walk up and down stairs if you don't have to? Of course not. Why would you want to do that? 
So they want to walk on levels, especially where a level ground is going to provide this kind of sustenance. And we have a lot of things here that are very important. We've got the food, the overnight food over here, right? Um, boom, I'm just going to end that. Okay. Boom. Well, anyway, you saw my, my area. It did not save my shape, but you can save those things just as easily. With this over here, okay, that's our little food area. But we also have this clearing here. And by looking at this too, 1,700 feet, right here we've got the high point. That would be something that I would want to go to to check out. I think that's a spot you would want to check out because it's the high point. In the evenings and afternoons, as thermals start working their way, the ground heats up a little bit, it's lifting some of the odors, deer might feel a little more secure moving up on those higher points. I'm just throwing that out there. That might be something that you want to look at. None of this stuff can be confirmed without maybe running some cameras, checking deer sign and actually hunting and getting some boots on the ground in that area. But these are just things that I'm seeing from the picture here, from the image that I'm throwing out there. And hopefully you get something out of this, but I'm, I'm really just trying to show you the thought process here that I go through when I'm looking at these maps. Um, I am not an expert on this. This has never worked for me. I've never gone out and killed anything because I haven't tried yet. I've done similar thoughts on my private property that I've hunted and it's worked, right? But I have never applied this to a brand new property like a public ground setting. If you have and you have comments or suggestions, I welcome them and so do other friends of Bungie. So please feel free to share those. But another thing that I'm seeing here and I'm trying to think about and predict deer behavior, thinking about this, if we have food here at night, we also have a nice clearing here. Now, if I zoom in on that a little bit, there's going to be a limit to what we can see from outer space, but it does look like that is a different sort of vegetation from right here. This looks like hardwoods, mature hardwoods, tall hardwoods, where the forest floor is bare, more so, right? Same thing over here. But when I look here in the middle, that looks like a uh, clearing of some sort. Now, it's got some pretty strong delineation here, a triangle shape to it. Now, did a chainsaw make that? I'm going to show you a little trick, something I figured out here, something I have noticed about this, is that if I click on topo, it gets rid of all the vegetation, right? It just shows you the ground, the shape of the ground. And incidentally, you can see those blue dots I'm talking about here too. If I were to go back to map layers and get rid of government layer, government land, so that layer, you can see that I can toggle those blue dots on and off. I can get rid of those. So if you want to look at it without that, that's great. Problem is then you don't have the boundary lines. So you got to have that on there in order to have the boundary lines. I like it on there, so we'll leave that on there. But the important thing is in topo, boom, and I'm going to mark this, put a little waypoint there. Look at where that creek, at least according to the topographical map, where that creek starts. If I zoom out a little bit, we can see that that creek runs all the way over here to that pond. Now we can see the pond on our other map there, our hybrid or satellite map. So we'll go back to that in a second. But looking at these topographical lines, if you look at these also, do you notice the points in them? That tells me that it's either a ridge sticking up in the air or that it is a ravine of some sort going down. Now we know it's going down because water runs downhill and obviously the blue line for the water is down in there in the middle. So that is a ravine. So now we know, and you can almost, you can actually make out the shadow here that they put in there. But this tells us that that is in fact a ravine, but it's also telling us where the water is. Now, if I go back to our hybrid, right? That tells me something very important about that clearing. And it confirms something that I suspected by looking at the map. When I look at this picture, that looks like right here in the upper northern tip of that triangle clearing, it looks like a swamp. That looks like a semi-dry marshy swamp from space. That could mean that sometimes a year that's completely impassable, not valuable to deer in any way. On the other hand, this back end of that swamp, okay, up in here might be a little drier might provide areas of seclusion and safety for deer, and this might be a bedding area. There might be some big old swamp donkeys hiding in that, right? So which is it? You don't know without going there, but we know that the water runs away from it. That's important because it means it won't be too wet, right? The water's draining out of this area to go down that ravine, because as we saw before, a ravine pretty much starts at the end of that and runs out. So that's valuable information to have. I think that's a good place to check out. If I were going to hunt this, I would probably go right here and I would put a, add a waypoint um, and I would go boom, add a waypoint and you can move it around on the screen. On the phone, if you're adding a waypoint on there, you kind of have to move the map under the waypoint 
keep an eye out for that. Or position it right where you want it so that the, and it'll drop that waypoint right in the middle of the screen. So if you're, but it's gonna depend on, you'll get a feel for that, but just make sure you're putting waypoints where you want them. At first I was just haphazardly putting waypoints and they weren't lining up with where I was standing or anything, but you get a feel for it. Just be mindful of that. If I were gonna go scout this, I wanna show you another little tip or one little thing that I do, and you can, you're free to do anything else, but I would change the color to pink and then I would save it. And I might even go so far as to go in there, hit these three little dots, and then drag down here. And then I would put a, maybe give it a different name, say, check out swamp, question mark, or whatever, forget the typos, it doesn't matter. But the important thing is that now I've got, even with the typo, I know when I go out there that, oh, that was a swamp I wanted to check out. I have marked a shiny object from space on here and turned out to be a giant rock that was in one of the vlogs. I had a video of Genevieve jumping off of that vlog, off of that rock in that vlog. It's really cool, but it was one of the things that I actually saw on the map from space, from the satellite imagery and thought, let's check that out. When I'm over there, I want to check that out. So and I put a little pink thing on there. Later on, if you want to keep that waypoint, that's fine, but I would change it. I would change it to orange. I would go back to the orange color and the reason that I use the orange, I change it to orange when I have in fact confirmed it, checked it out. So if I were doing this scouting, if this was real, I would leave that pink until such time as I went there and then I would do it. Another thing you can do is share. Wow, is that cool. If I bring up the share menu, I can put in my name and to tell who I am and then I can share that with specific people. I sent a map, told a friend of Bungie, Eric Barnes, dual threat outdoorsman. He was a guest on the Talking with Bungie podcast, my podcast I've been putting out. A lot of people have enjoyed and I have enjoyed putting it out. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. He was a guest on Ear Sharing because he has a lot more experience hunting on public ground than I have. I have some experience hunting spring gobbler on unsuccessfully on, on uh, public ground, but he has some success killing some nice deer. And so he was kind enough to, to give me some tips and pointers, basically doing the same thing that I'm doing here on his app. And he shared ideas, waypoints with me. And I just accepted them on my end, on the phone, and it incorporated them right into my app. It was seamless, it was beautiful. And I ended up with a lot of nice points to go check. And they, they have been part of those blocks. So you can check those out. Also, just throwing this out there, I'm gonna be recording with him a podcast episode in the near future where he's going to give me his tips about what he looks for on this app, on this sort of thing. And so we'll be talking about that in another episode coming up. Um, I'm looking forward to that for some additional pointers. Now I'm doing this one without those pointers, but I'll delete this one right here. We hit delete, get rid of that, delete, boom, get that off the screen. But I am looking forward to that conversation with him because it's going to be full of more information for me, right? It's going to be more tips for me. One thing that I would say is if you locate this, if you go there, okay, and you go to that swamp, you go to that clearing and you locate bedding there, okay? And I did get a question recently from someone, very good question. How do you know if it's a bedding area? This is one of the things you're looking for. I'll look around on here and see if I can see others, but this is the kind of area where that might be bedding, right? If you determine, when you go there, if you see matted down areas where it looks like a 150 pound animal has laid there and compressed the leaves, compressed the grasses, what have you, if you find something like that, that's probably a deer bedding area. And you can tell by the size of the area, whether it's a bunch of does bedding there or whether it's one big buck or what have you. You can tell from that. Look for sign there. Are you seeing some scat? Look for deer hair. I love looking for deer hair. To me, locating deer hair is like the finest, most intricate form of sign you can find. It's the most intricate scouting there is out there because you're finding a hair, a hair that tells you there was a deer there. That's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. So keep an eye out for that stuff. It's really no different than looking for rubs or scrapes, for example, or deer trails. Once your eyes are opened up and tuned in on that, you will find them. Spring is in the air. The, I was working at home today, but I got all done with that. And got back into my, what my dad would call my loafing uniform. And I'm trying to record this video now and I've got the uh, neighbors out mowing the lawn. How good, that's pretty cool. Locating deer sign, whether it's bedding areas, rubs, scrapes, what have you. It's no different than getting your eyes opened for shed hunting. Some people are looking for sheds. They can spot them from 50 feet away and they just, their eyes pick up sheds. I'm not in that category. 
but I can pick out a rub, I can pick out a scrape, I can pick out a licking branch even, uh, I can pick out deer hair on the ground pretty quick because I'm looking for that stuff and that's why I'm really I'm really interested in that. So I've gotten really good at that, um, especially the the bedding now. I'm getting so I'm starting to really look for that. But from a hunting perspective, what does this tell us? Now we know where there's a bedding area potentially for, you know, we don't know that that's a bedding area. It's pretty big, but if it's too open, it won't be a good bedding area. If it's too wet, it won't be a good bedding area. But let's say it, we, we do go there and determine that that's a bedding area. That's one of the places that so far that I've looked at on this map where I would look at that. Does it mean you want to hunt that? Maybe. Or does it mean you want to hunt over here in that clearing? Maybe. But another place to hunt is here in between the two because are we in a situation in fact maybe i'd be hunting up here and i'll tell you why if i go back to topo we can see that our water is up here there might be a water source there or at the northern end go back to the map at the north i didn't nail right on the head right on target that little point right there there might be water in this part of the swamp that the deer can consume okay but they're going to want to drink ideally before they eat and after they eat now they're going to eat in the evenings. And when I say eat, they'll be they can lay in the swamp if it's suitable. They can lay there all day long for the daylight hours, and get up, and walk a little bit, do their thing, go to the bathroom, eat eat a little bit of browse, and lay down. They are more than happy to do that, knowing that they have the safety of eating in this open field at night. You need to intercept them if that's their pattern that they're on. You would want to be here because they're going to go from their bedding. They're going to go to the water right? Or here. They're going to use a trail, look for a trail between here and here, and you're going to intercept them here on their trail on their way to that clearing. How is that for a hunting strategy? If you got other ideas, throw them out my way. That's the way I look at this stuff. I absolutely have no experience other than from my previous ex experience in private property doing stuff like this. I have not made it work on a property like this where it's completely fresh and new to me, not in a long time. So, uh, if you have experience with that and you see it differently, please share that in the comments. What else we got here we can look at on this nifty little property here? Let me get rid of that so we can get a full view of this. Let's zoom back a little bit. Now here, we got a field where we can also see the tire tracks. You see what I'm talking about there? Probably, man, this is a nice property, but I'm betting everybody and their brother, with all the parking areas, look at that boom and boom. Um, you probably get a lot of traffic on here, a lot of hunters. But if we look at this thing, man, this is just a gold mine. Look at this. I mean, you've got these giant fields, which again, they're haying these off. They are mowing them, what they're doing, whatever. I doubt that they are planting food plots, but look at this. You have hedgerows here. There's a nice hedgerow separating out one section from another. There's a hedgerow here separating out one section from another. Three hedgerows here separating out different sections of that feeding area. So when the deer come in there at night or in the evenings, they are separated and they have to, you know, maybe your bucks have to move a little bit. You could set up in a, I don't know if you can set up in one of these, but it's possible that you set up here and a deer, a buck has to move through the center of this plot to see if there's any does. And then he has to move around here to see if there's any does during that time of year when he's seeking and cruising and chasing and whatever he's doing, right? So you can look at it that way. Like this is, there's there's room there to really make some stuff happen, but I'm betting you're gonna get a lot of people here. However, when I look at this, we talk about bedding areas. Good Lord, look at this beauty. This is the open kind of stuff where you can see the difference between tall timber here and grassier grown up at thick areas like this. This and here, these are bedding. They look like they're potentially good bedding areas to me. Um, and that's you, without going there, you don't really, but that's, that's where you're going to go. So if you're asking me how to locate bedding areas, I would say that you look at, this is relatively flat too. If I get my area shape going here, boom, look at that. That is all flat, 20 acres of flat. That could be a bedding area. That certainly could be a place where a deer would want to bed there or here. Because if you're looking here, this is kind of a long, narrow strip also. But these areas right here, if you look at it from the sky, you can see the lines in here where the roads are cut, okay? Trails are cut, whatever. Something has gone through. This is too straight to be part of nature. It probably has something to do with chainsaws at some point. I'm talking about a line from there to there. I'm talking about a line from there to there and then down to here. Those lines are a little bit too straight in my view to be 
natural. They are they have something to do with chainsaws. Recent chainsaw activity suggests that there's going to be more dense vegetation in there, perhaps, and that is going to assist in bedding areas. Contrast that with just looking over here, tall timber. If you've got an open forest floor, deer aren't going to like that as much, I don't think. I think they're going to be a little less comfortable there. They'll go through it, right? They'll walk through there, but only certain times of day, certain times of year, is it going to get significant traffic. So you can look at that kind of stuff. Problem here, again, we're close to the road, so that's going to be, you know, people are going to, it's going to get a little heavy, heavier traffic. If we look down in here, now we've, we've gone through this area here already. Here, this is interesting. This looks like it's all grown up in, if I had to guess, this was cut at one time and it has grown up very thick with smaller vegetation. We have trails cut here, logging roads, and I wouldn't be surprised that there would be bedding pockets in here and probably bedding in this whole thick thing if it's, if it's as dense as it looks. Um, but you gotta go see it. If it grows up too much and it gets too tall and you know, where there's nothing on the bottom, just tall, thin trees. That's like a lot of tall saplings. It's going to be too dense for deer aren't going to be in there, I don't think, as much. But you go there and you look for trails going in and out, and perhaps that's what you find. Huh. There's some other nice ones down here, too. They have really cut through here, if you look at this. This shows you the value of timbering. Right here, that looks like a great bedding area. I suspect what we're looking at there is new growth where trees have grown back, but they were, this section is all cut in here. See, it's not clear like this, but it's thicker like that. I think that's probably a thicker area and that's something I would go check out. I wanna show you one last thing and this amazes me. The world that we live in, do you see what I see on this section right here on this little clearing? Do you see what I see? Those are deer trails. Can you believe that? It reminds me of when I flew the drone over the swamp down in Maryland. I could make out deer trails, Sika deer trails going through that thick swamp. Those weeds are 10 feet plus. The, it's water everywhere. It's just a swampy mess. And you can make out from space, well, not from space, but with my drone, from above, I can make out deer trails down here. This is making out deer trails from space. You can actually see some of these trails from space. Now this might be water. If we go back to our topo, see it could be water. There is a creek running through there, or at least that's a collection of water. That's where the water is running. But if we go back to this, this could be swamp, could be swampy water, you know, trails, stuff like that from the water, from the creek weaving through there, from little tributaries weaving through there. But that could just as easily be deer trails, foot traffic from deer. And here they've mowed, so you don't really get it as well. Same thing there. This is mowed. But I think if you look at this, you kind of get what I'm talking about. And I've seen that in other spots, too. I always look for that. Pretty neat stuff. This is clearly a tributary. That is a creek. That is not a deer trail. But these smaller ones over here, those are deer trails. I bet they're deer trails. So if you're looking for stuff, if you're looking for trails to go um, to explore, and you want to look for hunting areas, hopefully this video gives you some tips. I don't know. I could look at this stuff all day long, but that is just my initial process of what I do when I'm looking at a brand new area. Look at all the parking areas. Holy cow. When I'm looking at that new section, that's what I look for. I go through and I look for some trails, if I can see those from space, changes in elevation, changes in the geography, in other words, geographic features. Do we go from clearings to hardwoods to clear cuts to swamps, stuff like that. Unique patterns, unique things in the in the, in the geographic area. I look for flat spots to try and mark and to sort of look at as potential hunting areas, right? Groups, like I, like I drew that one out there. And I look for food. That's what we look for in bedding. So I welcome comments, really I do. I hope you'll join me for future scouting vlogs and I hope you'll check out the upcoming podcasts and whatnot and have some fun. Get yourself a phone, get yourself an app, go out there and have some fun, get out and scout, right? Until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie. <laughs>